It's Jeff. Quick video to give you a little description of the one horsepower wash pump motors that we're getting uh, delivered to our branches now. These motors are the same as we used to get basically, but they're coming in wired at 230 volts from the factory. The motors that we received for years were pre-wired to run at 115 volts. And unless we change some wires in the back of the motor before they get installed, they will overheat in a short period of time and they'll quit working. So I was just gonna kinda of walk you through the old motor, new motor, wiring diagram, and give you some tips on how to switch the wires around. My preference would be to see these motors switch when we get them in from our shipments so that everybody's working with the same thing when they leave the shop. The exception to this motor would be when we use it on a UHT that has a 208 volt or 240 volt service instead of a 110. We could, uh, leave it as is and mark it UHT, but I guess my preference would be to switch them all right away, get them set up for 110, so if somebody walks in the shop, they pick up any motor and they know it's gonna work, and then the exception would be changing wires back to this configuration for 208. So I'll walk you through some stuff. Stay tuned. This is the data plate on the motor that we have seen for years. This is a one horsepower pool and spa water pump type motor. It's designed to work under full load, meaning the amperage on the motor will drop actually when you run it with water in the machine as opposed to running it just dry on the bench. It's kind of interesting. On this motor, I've got some information that's meaningful to us. And this, this number right here, this is voltage. It says 115 slash 230. And what that means is that this manufacturer has built this motor to run on either 115 volt voltage coming in from a regular household outlet, which is what we use, or it can run at 230 volts, which for us would generally be hardwired. And you would see that on a UHT where we use the same motor as the other machines, but we have to change the wiring in this motor to match this 230 volts because we've got 230 volts coming into the dishwasher. And the way we do that is we compare whatever their chart looks like over here. This has a low voltage and a high voltage. And the, the color combinations and the terminals in the back of the motor are different based on what I'm trying to figure out. This motor chooses between 115 and 230. I've got a low voltage here. That means that this setup will run properly when I give it 115 volts. The high voltage would be for 230. It has nothing to do with how much actual voltage is coming coming into the machine. It's just a reference from low, meaning the first number that I see here, and high, meaning the second number, the higher the two. Okay, this is the back of the motor we were just looking at, the traditional autochlor one horsepower motor. If I looked at the diagram on the side, I would I would see that brown and orange are supposed to be on terminal number five, which is right there. That red and white are supposed to be on terminal L2, or this guy right there. And you can see where the numbers, it's a little hard to see here, but there's one, two, three, four, there's nothing on this one, five, and then six, or L2. If I needed to change this to 230, the diagram tells me that I need to move the brown wire all by itself onto number onto number three, and then I need to find the white wire, which is down here, and I need to move it over to be with the orange on number five. And then it would be wired correctly to run at 230 volts, or it would do just fine on a UHT. This is the latest version of the one horsepower motor that's coming in today. And it doesn't look too much different than the ones we've got before. The wiring diagram is effectively the same. All the information on the data plate is the same. But if I go to the back of the motor and I take a look at the wiring that's in it, I'm gonna see that I've got, I've got a whole different wiring configuration going on. In this motor, I can see that that white wire I just mentioned on the first one is already on terminal five. And that brown one is all by itself already on terminal three. So this is already wired at 230 volts right out of the box. So what I would need to do here is take this brown wire and move it down to terminal five where the orange wire is and I'd create that space by taking the white wire off and moving it back to the number six terminal or our L2 connection. And just for fun, 
if I have an L1 and an L2 marked on the side of a motor, what that usually refers to is the terminal that's got a screw terminal or a lug on it. And it doesn't matter for us if we have L1 or L2 hooked up to the white or the red wire on our regular pump motor feed. The polarity doesn't matter. I could hook a white up to L1 or the white up to L2 and vice versa. On the um, UHT, the same applies. The color of wires that we use in the UHT may not be white and red like you're used to, but the two main wires that come in are reversible and the motor will still run the same direction. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this 230 volt factory motor back over to 115. I've got the white wire and I'm gonna pinch it and pull it off gently. That's terminal number five. The directions tell me I need to move it over to terminal number six. So I'll get it landed right there and then give it a little push. And then I need to go ahead and get that brown wire from terminal number three. And I need to put it on the orange terminal. And it's giving me a little bit of fuss here, so I'm gonna give myself some room and then I'm gonna land it back on terminal number five right next to the orange wire. And that's all there is to it, to switch that to 115. Put her back together and I'm gonna go ahead and take one additional step. I'm gonna make a big Sharpie mark on the front that's wired in at 115. There's enough of these floating around now of unknown voltage configuration that I'm gonna do uh, everybody a favor and mark it on permanent pen. If I got a motor that's completely painted over and I don't have any bare metal to write on, I'll probably put a good piece of masking tape or duct tape on it and write it with permanent marker. Not a bad idea to, as a best practice though to crack these open before you install them and make sure that those wires are on the right terminals. If you want a fun project, grab an AC44 conveyor motor or a, a wash pump motor and look at the settings on it. It says 230 versus 460 and you can explore the different options on the different generations of those motors and see how those wires kind of come together in different pairs. Before I go, I want to give you a little insight on what's happening on the inside of a motor. Anytime you see a copper wire like this inside of a magnet or a coil, that, this wire is spun around in different groups of loops and you can see at the end here I've got a couple of wires hanging out that go to the capacitor. There's some wires in a bunch here that go over to the terminals that ultimately are the back of the terminals that we just mess around with when we change those wires. When these motors are fabricated they're, they're, they're wound with all these groups of coils in different pairs and you can join pairs together and you can keep pairs separately to allow us to have different voltages and that's why we have these motors that you can run on either low or high voltage. When, when motors run they get hot and I'll give you a, an example of a motor that's headed for the scrap heap here. This thing right here, the connector wires that come off of the main coil loops, there's insulation burned all over the back of one of these guys right here and I don't know if it was just vibrating and it, and it ran uh, and it shorted out and it got hot and it started to burn the insulation from the inside out or if it's just tired and old but this is this is why motors fail right here is you have you have voltage that can get out of the wire because it's missing insulation and it'll make contact with metal or it'll make contact with the wire that's next to it and it'll cause heat which causes a thermal overload which causes the breakers to blow when you see these copper wires and anything that that we use that's basically a magnet. This is not bare copper. It's got a clear plastic coating. They take this wire and they stretch it out real thin and they, they drip it through like an epoxy or some sort of enamel coating and so this insulation physically separates each wire from the next one in the group. And as they lay next to each other they're not really conducting uh, electricity like you would with two bare wires but there's enough of a connection magnetically between the two wires as the electricity runs around that the engineers have figured out how to make these become a big giant magnet. Mm -hmm. And the magnet switches 60 times per second from like north to south. And as that magnetic pole reverses with 60 hertz, mm -hmm. it will start to drag the steel in the middle of this frame, or what we call the rotor, 
the rotor starts to move around and it chases that magnetic field as it runs around in a circle and that's how motors turn and on a three-phase motor and some some single-phase motors you can kind of rewire them so that they reverse directions the motors that we purchase are not reversible but you you will see them in the shop and some of our mixing tanks so they'll have a motor that looks just like this but it it was wired in a way that you can you can turn a couple wires around inside of this deal and you can make it turn and go the other direction now heat is the enemy of all electrical components you see the 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 veins on the front of this rotor here this is what causes air to start flowing down the length of the motor housing and if you look at the outside of the housing on these motors you're going to see spaces along the, along the outside of it and what what happens when the motor is cranking it is pulling air into the vents on the front or the other side of the motor here and it's exiting out the back towards the camera and the, the air flow from the front to the back is cooling off all of those windings and it's keeping the motor cool. If it's kept cool because the motor vents are kept clean and that we're sure that we turn off the motor or we're, it's not running when we're cleaning out the vents so that the stuff that we get out of there doesn't end up clogging these little slots around the perimeter, then that motor will have a really long life. These are very durable. But when we stop cleaning motor vents, or we clean them out and that crud gets sucked up into here and it gets stuck and the air can't flow through, it really shortens the life of a motor. These windings will start to get hot and then the insulation will start to degrade between the windings and then it'll get a little bit hotter in one spot and then pretty soon the insulation just burns off entirely and then it's like a kind of a, a cascade or waterfall effect where it just goes over the cliff and there's a big burn spot in these in these windings and that's why motors quit way sooner than they should. If you have any questions, hit me up on Teams. Be well, everybody.